Welcome to the Westcott Crochet Channel and welcome to the Shamrock Granny Square Tank Top. It's a fun little weekend project for St Patrick's Day. As usual, if there's a written pattern, the link will be in the description box. For this one, I used less than 300 metres of each yarn colour. All three were medium to lightweight DK acrylic yarns, which recommended the use of a 4mm hook, and I used a 4mm hook throughout. I also used a tape measure, and you may also want to use a yarn needle if that's your preferred method for joining your granny squares. If you enjoyed the tutorial, please give a thumbs up and leave a comment to highlight the video. If you haven't already, do please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to support future uploads. You can also follow me on Instagram and if your account is set to public, do tag at Westcott Crochet on any pictures of your Westcott Crochet projects. I just wanted to mark St Patrick's Day this year. It's the first year it's been up and running since I landed here in Ireland, just shortly before the whole world went into lockdown. So I created a little shamrock granny square. If you can see the shamrock sort of floats above the rest of the square. I then knocked out five more, so six in total, and just put them together in this little um, cute little tank. I'm going to show you how I did that. For my actual project, I used a yarn that recommended a four millimeter hook and I used the recommended four millimeter hook. And for this demonstration, I'm going to use a thicker yarn and a bigger hook, a uh, five, just so you can have more chance of seeing what I'm doing because it's quite a fiddly little thing the shamrock so start with a slip knot and chain five flip over my chain and work into these back bumps here starting from number two and work a single crochet Same again for number three, single crochet, same again for number four. Into number five, the last chain, I'm going to slip stitch. So there we have the stem. Now, if you like, weave in this tail end because it will get in your way. And keep an eye on chain number five because I'm working into that again in a moment. I'm going to chain three and I'm going to slip stitch into chain number five again. I'm going to chain number three. I'm going to slip stitch again into chain number five. Chain another three. Slip stitch again into chain number five. So what I have now is a stem and three little chain spaces. I'm just going to cross over the front here into chain space number one, the first one that I created, and slip stitch. So into that first chain space, I'm now going to work the following. Single crochet, half double crochet, two double crochets, Two half double crochets, get rid of the tail end, two double crochets, a half double, shunt those around. A single and a slip stitch and that's number one I'm then going to move on to chain space number two and slip stitch into there I'm going to repeat all of these stitches into chain space number two single 
half double, two doubles, two half doubles, move them around, two doubles, one half double, one single, and a slip stitch. That's number two, it's upside down. There you go. Chain space number three, slip stitch into there, and repeat again. After all that, I've got a stem and three leaves, and this big ugly hole in the middle, which needs to be closed. Back in with my hook, I'm going to insert my hook next to petal number, petal, leaf number three, and leaf number two. Yarn over and pull through everything to slip stitch and pull that tight. In through leaf number two and leaf number one, yarn over and slip stitch. And again, pull it tight. Chain one, pull that tight, and you can cut your yarn and weave in the ends. And that should close up your hole. Okay, I'm back to a green shamrock and it's regular sized. So I'm on my four millimeter hook with my yarn that recommends a four millimeter hook. I'm just in through the back of the stem. So right in the back, just pick up a couple of loops and that's what makes it sort of stand out from the rest of the um, granny square, just by hooking up into the back there instead of the front or the bottom. So on with the slip knot and chain one to secure that. I'm going to then chain one, two, three, and four. And then in the middle of leaf number one in the back, again, just grab a couple of loops. And make sure you can't see that from the front. Yarn over and slip stitch. So from the front, you can't see all the way through. Chain four again, one, two, three, and four. Middle of the next leaf, grab a couple of loops in the back, yarn over and slip stitch. Chain four, one, two, three, and four. Same again for the final leaf, couple of loops in the back, and slip stitch. And finally for this round, chain four, and just going to slip stitch into this start point for the chain one. That I worked to start with, and I don't know why I pulled it tight because I knew I was going to have to slip stitch in there, but there we go. We're in. And that's that. Looks a bit weird at the moment, but it's all going to come good. So, turn around, remove the tail end. Actually, I'll just weave it in while I'm working. And I'm going to go around the chain. So, I'm going to chain up one to start build up the height of my yarn and I'm going to go around the chain and work four single crochets around the first chain. I'll jump over to the next chain, work four more single crochets. Next chain, four more. And 
in the last one, four more. And slip stitch into the first stitch from the start of the round. Next round I'm going to work cluster stitches of four double crochets. Starting from where I slip stitched into that first stitch, either chain two and that's your first half of your first double crochet. I'm going to work a standing double or at least half of a standing double. So I pull up my loop to the height of a double crochet and hold the loop to my hook with my finger. Wrap the loop around the hook to form loop number two, keeping hold of first loop. In through the stitch, pull back loop number three yarn over and pull through the first two loops leaving the last two on my hook i can let go now so that's number one or half of number one yarn over for number two in through the stitch pull back a loop yarn over pull through two loops that's half of stitch number two number three yarn over in through the stitch pull back a loop yarn over pull through first two loops that's three one more four and I've got five loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through all five loops and that's my first cluster stitch. I'm going to chain one, two and go on to the next. So one, two, three, Four half finished double crochets, five loops on my hook, pull through all five, chain two. I'm going to work that way the whole way around. I should have 16 cluster stitches at the end. All right, 16 cluster stitches later. Make sure you work the 16th stitch because it's just might be a bit obscured by the, the stuff that went on at the beginning there. Um, so root that out, work the 16th. And then I've changed two at the end. I'm going to slip stitch into the top of cluster stitch number one to close that off. I'm then going to slip stitch into this chain two space next door and I'm going to work a double crochet so either you're chaining three in place of that double crochet or I'm going to work a standing double as I did before but this time I'm working the full stitch so again loop up to the height of a double crochet, hold onto the loop and wrap the loop around the hook to form two loops, in through the space, pull back a loop to form three, yarn over, pull through two, I can let go now, and yarn over and pull through the last two. I'm going to work two more double crochets in the same space, into that chain two space between the cluster stitches, making three in total. Either you've got three double crochets starting with a standing double or you've got a chain three and then two double crochets making three all together. Into the next space I'm going to yarn over twice and work a treble crochet. Pull through two, pull through two and pull through two for the treble. I'm going to work two more. I'm going to chain two and into that same space I'm going to work three more treble crochets making a corner. And that's the corner, this what will now be a square, going from a circle to a square. Next gap, next chain two space, I'm going to work three double crochets. Next gap, I'm going to work three half double crochets. Next gap, three double crochets. And the next 
next gap I'm going to work a corner so that's three trebles chain two three trebles So then we have corner number two. I need four in total to make a square, obviously. In between which I'm going to work three double crochets into the next space, three half doubles into the one after, three double crochets into the next space, and then it's another corner, which is three trebles, chain two, three trebles. And then again, three doubles, three half doubles, three doubles, next corner. And I should finish with three doubles and three half doubles because I've already got my second set of three doubles when I started. So with that my circle has become a square. I'm just going to, I've just added a blue background so that you can actually see it. Um, I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the first double crochet or if you chain three to start you slip stitching into the third chain and then from here you can increase the size of your square by turning around and working three double crochets in between each batch of three. So from here, I'd be working either a chain three or a standing double, plus two more. So I just have to move this because it's sliding about. And then next space between the next two sets of stitches straight into there with the next three doubles. Straight into the next space, three more doubles. And then I have a corner where I'll work three doubles, chain two and three more doubles. And just work that way the whole way around. And then you just keep going, keep turning and working your sets of three and your corners when you reach those until you get the length or width or size of square that you want. So that's me with the extra round on the square and you just keep adding rounds on to get the size square that you want for whatever project you're working with. If you are working a top like mine, you need to first measure it around the widest part of your upper body, wherever that might be. Add on some extra centimetres if you want a looser fit and divide that total by six. Each square needs to measure one sixth of that measurement. So once you have your square to the right size, make five more and join them together along the sides. joined all of my squares end to end, first forming a strip of granny squares and then joining the two ends to form a, just a continuous little loop. So here from the bottom, anywhere at the bottom, I'm going to join with a slip knot in the green. And it's the same green that I used for the um, shamrocks. Okay, so I'm just going to turn upside down and I'm working the granny square stitch, but not in a square. I'm going to go around the outside bottom edge. So again, starting for me with a standing double or you're going to start with a chain three. So if you are starting with a chain three, you may want to start on one of the corners just so it's less conspicuous. With the standing double, it doesn't matter because you can't really tell. So that's stitch number one, three, again together, into the next space, three more, and just work that way the whole way around. You'll come to the spot where, well I'm here now actually, where the two squares join. Just put three where they join and carry on. I'm going to work all the way around and I'll come back. That's one lap. As always, slip stitch to close the round. 
and I'm going to turn around and go again on round two. So again, just working clusters of three, well not clusters of three, but bunches of three stitches in every gap. I'm going to do three rounds in total and we're back when I've done. So that's three completed granny rounds, I guess they're called. I'm going to now do a ribbing at the bottom in front post, back post, double crochet. If you want to pull in the bottom of the top at this point, Slot down your hook, so make a smaller, one size or two sizes smaller, and this will pull in the bottom. To start the front post, back post, double crochet, if you're chaining three, you chain your three, and that's the stitch that goes with this post directly beneath it. So your next post stitch will be around here. I'm going to work a standing double around the post. Uh, standard. So I'm going around the actual post of the stitch, not into the top loops, and working my double crochet. So that's a back post on the other side, sorry, on this side it's a front post. So on the right side it drops back, which is going to be the same as if you're doing a chain three. That also needs to be the back stitch. Next one I'm going to go the opposite way so I'm pushing the post backwards so it's a back post double crochet but from the front from the right side it's going to be a front post and then alternate in front of and behind all the way along I'm going to keep going with this all the way around and I'll be back to slip stitch in stitch number one to close. If you're not a fan of this type of ribbing, check out the chapters for edging and trim on my video for the Space Invader tank top. That's one lap of the back post, front post double crochet ribbing. Slip stitch into stitch number one to close as usual. Pull that around. Or, of course, you're slip stitching into the third of your three chains, wherever you started. And let's turn around and go again. Oops, sorry, not to the camera. All right, so again, you're either going to chain three, and that's going to be above your original chain three, and you start with your next stitch here. I'm going to work around the post with a standing double. And the post is pushed back, so I go and push it back again. I'll just copy what went on in the row prior. So this next post is forward, so I'm going to push it forward again. And so on. Back and forward. And what you're just doing is extending these ridges lengthwise. I'm going to work all the way around like that again. Slip stitch into chair, stitch number one. Turn around and do it all again. I'm just going to work a few rows in the back post, front post ribbing. I finished working the bottom trim. I worked four rounds of the back post, front post double crochet. I've also started along the top and I've worked two rounds, granny rounds, on the top in the orange. I deliberately started my rounds at the point where I wanted my strap to come out. So it's a little way in from the sides about if you follow, if you try this on as is and follow up to where a bra strap would sit, that's what you're aiming for. So for me, it's here and I've marked out the spot on the back as well. I marked it and I'm going to work a chain that goes up and over my shoulder and joins into the, to join onto the back here. It's going to be for me 64 stitches. I need to make sure I have around this arm opening an even number of stitches. So I count the stitches that I already have between the two markers and then add on my strap number and just make sure that I end on an even number. So I'm going to work 64 chains 
and then I'm going to join the slip stitch into this point here. So I have 64 chains. Make sure the chain's not twisted. I'm in through the spot on the back and I'm going to slip stitch to join. There we go. I'm then going to work back down my chain into the back bumps with a row of single crochet. So I'm just going to start with a chain at one. First back bump, single crochet. And I'm going to work that way the whole way up my chain. One stitch in the back bump of each. I've worked my 64 single crochets around the chain and then making sure that my chain isn't twisted or my single crochet row isn't twisted. I'm going to be working back into the stitches I've just created, but I'm going to be working around the posts. So it's the same way as the double crochet front post back post. I'm working double crochet front post back post but around these little posts from, from the single crochets. So either slip stitch into stitch number one on the top of, chain out three and start from the next one, or start from the first one and work a standing double. So let me make sure that I'm not twisted. I am not. And in we go. So down, whoops, dropping out. Down one side, up the other, and just work my stitch as normal. Next stitch, I go up, sorry, straighten myself out, up one side, and down the other, and double crochet. And then down and up. Whoops, I'm just doing down and up. Up and down. And alternate like that the whole way along from these single crochets. Just realise I'm not zoomed in, so I'm going to zoom in and show you a little bit closer. So that was that one. I'm going to start the next one up one side of the stitch and down the other side of it. Pull back my loop. Down and up for the next one. So I hope that's clear. If I'd started and worked double crochets along my chain, and then did the front post back post from there. You get a gap here because what I'm going to do is work the front post back post from this side as well. And you just get a big gaping sort of hole where the transition is. Whereas with this way, if I work single crochet and then work the doubles back post front post on either side of it, it's a lot neater. So it's worth the struggle. It's a bit of a fiddle to start with, but take your time, work around these tiny little posts and that will all be worthwhile. So I'm going to work to the end of my single crochet row and I'll come back. I have my 64 front post, back post, double crochets. I'm now on to, I'll just straighten myself out so you can see where I am. So I've just gone up and around the strap. I'm now going to go around this bottom part of the arm opening. And I will zoom in and show you what happens next. Okay, so that was the last stitch on what was essentially the strap part. And that was a back post. So I need to work a front post on this next stitch along the bottom here. And I'm literally just going to keep going with the alternating stitches all the way around to the other edge, other end, sorry, of the strap. And it just follows on like that. 
So that's all across the bottom edge there. And I have slip stitched into the first stitch, the top off, to seal that off. I'm now going to turn around and repeat with another row. Um, obviously, I'm not working single crochets at any point. I'm only working around double crochets. So starting with the first one, either you're chaining three or you're doing the standing double. Again, as the bottom band, keeping the stitches going in the same direction. So if you've got a back post, push it back. If you've got a forward front post, push it forward. I'm going to just do these two rounds in total, and then I will repeat the process on the other side. After two rounds, this is what that looks like. I have slip stitched into stitch number one to close as usual, chained one to secure my work and cut my yarn. So it's just leaning inwards now, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to work the same strap on the other side and then there'll be some ribbing on the inside, which is going to straighten everything out. So over to the other side and do the exact same thing. I'm going to add on a slip knot, pull that through and chain 64. And then into the back loop, starting from the back here where I've slip stitched and joined my chain. I go for the back loops and go up and around on this inside edge with a row of single crochet. Then I go back from here, back around the single crochet row with the back post, front post, double crochet around those single crochet posts. Pick up my game here, work the back post, front post around the edge and join with a slip stitch. Then I'm going to go back the other way and do a second round. I have two straps now and I'm going to join in the center with a slip knot. And I want to start with a back post double crochet because that then matches if you're chaining three, that's also your first back post double crochet. But what I also want to do is make sure so I'm just going to pull that through the stitch, chain one, two, secure it. I need to make sure that I'm lining up with these stitches up the strap so that they're the same. So obviously I have no back post, front post, double crochet along the bottom, but I want to join up here and match that this is a front post and this is a back post. So I'm going to count backwards from the last one. So here's a back po front post, sorry, and there's a back post. I'm also going to put a stitch in here to alleviate gaps. Let me zoom in. Okay, so here it's not actually a double crochet stitch. It is the gap between two. So it's it's this, but over here. Just otherwise you get a big gap in between in your corner. So front post, back post, that's going to be a front post, and then back front, back front, back front, back front, all the way along. And make sure that when you're in the middle that you're on the right one to start so here i'm on a back post and then it should catch up nicely so either chain three and that's your first back post or work a back postable crochet as a standing double like so and then I'm just going to a standard front post, back post, all the way to this corner. I'll be back then. So here I am at the corner. I'm going to, this goes up the strap. And I'm going to, as I say, work the gap. So in through here on the other side of the strap section. So it's going in between and work my front post double crochet. So next I'm going to be working up the strap. So I'm back to single crochet um, stitch posts. So what I'm going to do is I'm starting with a back post. So I am going to go up on one side, down on the other, and work my, single, my double crochet there. And then on the front posts, I'm actually going to pick up the round the front post on the other side and just work that around there. Now I can't do that with the back post. I'd still have to work the single crochet stitches. Otherwise you get kind of a bulky section on top. 
So back post is around the single crochet, front post is around the front post from this other side and just keep alternating all the way around the strap. That's the back, there's the front and that's how that looks. I've gone up and over the strap and I'm now at this bottom corner on the other side. Again, to make sure there's no gaps, I'm going to work around this area here that's not really a stitch. So that was a front post, I'm on for a back post and I'm just going to pop one into there. So that takes care of the gap. And then I just pick up on the bottom side now and work my way along the front edge here. As I approach the corner for the next strap here, I've just worked my way across the front. So at the strap here, um, I'm out of sync on my stitches. So I've just worked a front post. I'd be working a back post around this corner area again as before. And then I need another back post here. So what I'm going to do is first zoom in. So I'm going to work a back post around that little corner area. And then I'm going to work a front post around that same area. And essentially just add an extra sneaky stitch in there to make it right. And then I'm on to the single crochet part again. So, and a front post. So up on one side, down on the other side and work the stitch. And then again, as I did on the other side, working the actual posts from the across the way here for the front posts and the single crochet post for the back post. And then just alternate all the way across the strap. Worked all the way around strap number two and I'm here at the corner again. A quick check across confirms that I'll be out of step with my stitches again. I need to make sure that I finish on a front post so I can slip stitch into this back post stitch here. So what I'm going to do again is instead of adding an extra stitch, I added an extra stitch at the other side. So I'm going to take away a stitch at this side. So I'm on for a back post and here's the corner. Let me zoom in again. So a back post stitch and this is the corner area and I'm going to also pick up the first post on the flat side at the same time. So around there, around the next stitch and work my double crochet. And that takes care of that and I'm back on to the right stitch. The next one, the front post. And then back post, front post, all the way back to the end where I will slip stitch, as I say, into stitch number one. So I finished the round and then I turned around and we've started back on the next round. And I'm just at the corner again as I approach the strap. And here I'm on the stitch before the corner and I have the corner stitch and then the stitch after the corner. And I'm going to work those three stitches together as one, but continuing to alternate between back post, front post. So I go over with my yarn for stitch number one, round the post in the normal way, pull back the loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, then I yarn over for the second one and I'm going round the post as normal, pulling back a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, third one, round the post as normal, pull back the loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. And now I've got four loops on my hook and three half finished double crochets. I'm going to yarn over and pull through all loops. And now they're all just one stitch in the corner there. From there, I just carry on as normal. One stitch in each all the way around. And on the next corner, I repeat the same three stitches in one. And I do that for obviously all the corners. This is what that looks like from the front. I 
After that round, this is what we have. I'll just zoom into the corner so you can see. In the corner, I now have this arrangement, which is now one stitch. So I'm going to work a few more rounds. If you like that as is, leave it as is. I'm going to work a few more rounds, at least one. And, and when I come to the corners now, the stitches to work together are this one, the back post, this whole set as one for a front post, and the back post on the other side of it. And I'll do that for all four corners. So to show that corner stitch in action, or the cluster with three in action, here I am at the corner. I'm going to go around this back post first and work half the stitch. Then I go around this entire cluster of three, the front post, and work half the stitch. And then the back post on the other side and half the stitch. And then yarn over, finish the whole lot. And then carry on as normal on the other side. So again, as I say, I'll do that for all four corners. For as, ever, as, as however many rounds I work, <laughs> can't speak. Um, and I'll come back when I'm finished. I've worked four rounds on the inside edge and chained and cut my yarn. I'm all done. If you do all of that, you'll end up with something like this. Do let me know how you got on in the comment section. Thanks to everyone out there who's supporting the channel and thanks so much for watching today.